and I shall see you in the next video. I just put the side of my face. Hey guys, my name is Gloria and welcome back to my channel. I would first like to start off this video by recommending two books um, from Irish authors, people living in Ireland. Um, the first is This Hostel Life by Milatu Oche Okori. I was volunteering in the Irish Writer Centre when she did the book launch for this, so I met her and her lovely daughter and I got to hear a read from it. Uh, she lived for a long time in direct provision centres in Ireland, um, terrible, terrible places, and she wrote this hostel life based on those experiences and the second book is Don't Touch My Hair by Emma Dabiri. It is about the history of black women's hair and the the traditions that involve all of that and I would recommend those books. I think you should definitely read them. The reason I'm recommending those is because I should be reading more books by non-white people. Um, first off I want to say Black Lives Matter. Um, also because of JK Rowling being at it again, trans lives matter and trans black lives matter because they give us the pride celebrations and remembrances that we have today. So all over the world right now, not just in America, there are black lives matter protests, there are protests against racial inequality and violence and in Ireland as well. These protests are to push for change in America and to push for change in other countries. Um, for example, in Ireland, we have direct provision centres. Uh, direct provision centres are where asylum seekers are forced to stay while they try and seek asylum in Ireland. Uh, originally, when they first started in the 90s, it was supposed to be a maximum stay of six months. Uh, but there are children who were born and raised there and have lived there for the entire 20 years of their life. Um, and they're not supposed to be lived in for that long, they're horrible conditions, they're people who live there aren't allowed to have jobs, they're not allowed to to have their own money, they're not allowed allowed to even cook their own foods and the kitchens are kept closed off from them, um, which is just bizarre to me. Um, and people have likened them to Magdalene laundries that we used to have in Ireland. So they're not um they're not good places and personally for me, uh the time that I grew up in last year or the year before I think uh, there were some refugees coming to stay in a hotel there and the people of my town, some of the people in my town, uh, burnt down the hotel almost killing the uh, the owner of the hotel because they just didn't want non-white people in their town. So there's racism in Ireland um, there are definitely things that need to change. Um, I'm going to link some charities down below um, to give money to Black Lives Matter um, American charities and also an Irish one that is against direct provision. There's, there's racism everywhere, there's discrimination everywhere and though I don't feel educated enough in the particulars or articulate enough to speak for too long in these things and I don't want to take time away from people of colour who we should really be listening to right now on these things. Uh, I just wanted to make it categorically clear that I don't in any way tolerate racism, I don't tolerate any kind of discrimination um, based on skin colour or gender or sexual orientation or anything like that. It's stupid and pointless and it only causes pain to everyone and I can absolutely do better in reading more black authors, more trans authors, more authors outside of my own experience um, and I will be doing that. I, I aim to do that in the future. I, I have been reading, um, since the start of this channel I have been reading LGBT books and books by black authors but I'm going to do more in searching out those authors and also different artists and different YouTubers and everything so if you have any recommendations for me in terms of books or artists so that I can buy art from. I buy a lot of um, bookmarks, even just wall paintings, wall hangings. I really like art like that. Um, so if you know of any, please let me know. I would absolutely love to be a customer of those people and YouTubers as well. I'll link down below some of the YouTubers that I've watched um, since I started this channel, uh, BookTubers. And 
if you have any suggestions for me please let me know do not hesitate I would like them so that is my intro for that um, I hope everyone who is involved in protests and whatnot all over the world I hope everyone is staying as safe as they can so today's book that I want to talk about um, I got it in the March Abominable Book Club and it is Captives by Sean so I'm just going to read the blurb first. Uh, the murders have been savage and apparently motiveless. Carbon copies of killings committed years earlier and by men currently incarcerated in one of Britain's top maximum security prisons. How could this be? Detective Inspector Frank Gregson must find the answers. Answers which will bring him into conflict with one of those prisoners, a man framed for a murder he didn't commit and determined to discover who framed him and why. These two obsessive men on their private quests will clash as they seek the truth which links Whiteley Prison with London's seedy underworld of sex shows and drug barns. One wants vengeance, the other wants the truth. What they discover threatens not only their lives, but their sanity. So, uh, Captives is... I will be honest, it, it was a little bit confusing. Um, it starts off with... I'm confused now, just trying to remember it. Okay, so it's... Ah, yes. So it begins with uh, a bank robbery, police closing in on a bank robber who ends up shooting a lot of people and then committing suicide himself by fire. Then it jumps to 1976. I'm not entirely sure when this book was is based. I think it's the 80s or early 90s. Uh, but there is a car crash and all we know is that one person survives. Then it goes back to the robbery and it goes back to 1977. Um, a doctor is interviewing several clearly deranged and violent men inside a prison and he's quite intimidated by them. So it is a little bit confusing with all of the different perspectives. There are a lot of different characters in this and there's policemen, there's a guy, there are um, strippers and sex workers, there's one in particular that is a main character in this and then there's her boyfriend who runs the the club, who he doesn't own it but he does run it there's the guy who does own the club, there are multiple police officers and then you're also taken into the minds of some of the criminals while they're committing these acts so there are a lot of characters to jump into as well as jumping back and forth between the doctors in the 19 in 1977 uh, dealing with the violent offenders and coming back to the present with the police officers looking for for these criminals so what's happening in the present is that crimes are being committed and after each one of these crimes the the perpetrator kills himself by setting himself on fire that's not the only thing that links these though. What links them is that each crime is identical to one that was committed years earlier by someone who the police know to be in prison. And it's too close to be copycats. Um, that's what they believe at the beginning. But then they start to realize that the, despite the fire, the physical characteristics are too similar to the prisoners and they start to wonder if these prisoners are in prison at all. While this is going on there are a couple of subplots um, involving the, um, I think it's called The Love Show, um, so it's a, what do they keep calling it, They're, they've got a name for it in this and I'm not sure what it was called, uh, I've never heard that before but there is a sex show where, obviously sex show, but um, almost like a strip club pretty much and I was pleasantly surprised by that because I've read so many stories where it's had absolutely nothing to do with sex, nothing to do with nudity but the female characters are introduced by their bra size. I know more about these women's, the colour of these women's nipples than I do about any other part of the story. Uh, but in this, there are women walking around in lingerie, there are women completely naked, and there was there was no need to describe their actual physical form. The guy who works there, he sees them all the time, he knows them, It's he wasn't really that interested because he just sees it so much. 
Um, and I like that. That was that was kind of refreshing to not have breasts described more than anything else in the book. Uh, and it made sense for the actual story. So that was a good shout. Uh, I would like to talk for a minute though about these. I don't normally annotate my books, I don't normally put in sticky notes, but I was getting to the end of this book and it was starting to drive me up the wall. Uh, I'm pretty sure I missed loads of these as well. I'm just going to read a couple just so you know. This is me being petty by the way, this doesn't actually ruin the book but it just was starting to get to me. I better go, said Carol. I'm due on in ten minutes. She smiled thinly at Plummer. I'm not sure there is that much more, and if there is, it wasn't meant for the likes of me. She smiled thinly. How many whiskeys later? He smiled thinly. Ten out of ten observation, said Finn, smiling thinly. Smiling thinly, smiling thinly, smiling thinly. Two in one page. Bullshit, Finn said, smiling thinly. Gregson smiled thinly. I mean, it was near the end, it was in the last hundred pages, it was starting to drive me up the flipping wall. It was getting to be a bit too much. If you had watched me reading this book um, near the end you would have just constantly seen me trying to smile thinly with my own face and it's a difficult thing to do. I'm not quite sure how to do it. It's like... I, yeah, so that's how I was reading this book, um, just smiling thinly. A couple times you read it it's nothing but I really think the editors need to look for phrases that are repeated like that. I mean once, maybe twice a chapter, that's one thing. Three times on one page though is just overkill. Everyone, just three characters standing around it, looking at each other, smiling at them. It just, it was a bit much for me, couldn't handle it. What was the other one? There's another one, um, shapely legs. Everyone had shapely legs. Um, I'm assuming they were leg shaped, shaped like legs, but everyone had just shapely legs. Uh, but those are just little petty things that stuck in my mind. It's That in particular didn't actually turn me off the book or anything. So like I said, it was a little bit confusing with all of the different characters. Um, the characters themselves are well written. They're, there's quite a diverse set of motives and Everyone has their own shit to deal with, everyone has their own lives to deal with outside of this mystery of the, the copycat murders and the copycat crimes that are going on. Uh, the only... The thing that I really didn't like about the book was the ending, um, only because there were too many twists and there wasn't enough of an answer to the core mystery of the book. There is a lot to do with prison in here and there are people in the prison doing things to prisoners that they shouldn't be doing um, for the greater good and their motives didn't quite match up with their actions. Really for me it, it wasn't given enough explanation. Also the fact that, small spoiler alert here, um, so there are prisoners that are let out of prison because they, they think that they've cured them of violence. Um, but then they just don't follow up on that. They don't monitor them. They don't follow them. They repeatedly tell you that their experiments have failed and yet they don't keep track of these people outside of prison to make sure that they don't go back to murdering people. There's also... There's no explanation as to why they kill themselves with fire. Like, I understand that it makes it more difficult to identify the body, but why would the the guy who's just killed a load of people care about that. He's going to kill himself. So I just that bit didn't that bit didn't do it for me. There wasn't enough of an explanation for that. Uh, one of the the female characters in the book randomly she keeps getting threatening uh, mouth breather phone calls. A guy keeps telling her that he's watching her and he knows where she is and he generally always does. And when you find out who it is at the end of the book. You're just kind of confused. It doesn't fit with that person's character. It doesn't fit with his motives. It just seemed like uh, something that was thrown in at the end. Like the author forgot about that thread and then just threw something in at the end. And 
it was on the back of a whole climactic scene where all these other things were coming out so it was just a bit of a blur for me and yeah I think if you had taken taken that little thread out it would have been a much better book but I did enjoy this I just I enjoyed Hudson's writing apart from Smiling Thinly if I read another one of his books and it's all Smiling Thinly <laughs> I might lose my mind but I did enjoy the story it was gory there's a lot of gory violence in it it does keep you intrigued and it keeps you turning the pages with the different mysteries, the different motives and the characters are well rounded and you do get locked in on the characters quite a bit. I'm going to give it a 4 stars out of 5 just because the ending, again, not great and it was a little bit confusing with the time jumps and whatnot. Um, so that is my review of Captives by Sean Hudson. I read a lot of books last month so I shall have a lot of I shall. Uh, I will have a lot of reviews coming up soon for all of those books that I've read. If you like what I'm doing here, you can like and subscribe down below. Also, don't forget to leave any recommendations for books or booktubers or artists that I can patron patronize. Artists that I can follow and buy stuff off. Um, and also, don't forget about these two books that I recommended at the beginning. I shall see you in the next video. Regional dishes. Regional American dishes.